overall pick in the 1990 draft and the first Charger draft choice taken by general manager Bobby Bethard. In Bethard's first two seasons in San Diego, the Chargers were 6-10 and and 4-12 and under Dan Henning. So there were some bumpy times as the man dubbed the smartest in the NFL by Sports Illustrated tried to turn things around. But now there's no question the Chargers are a new power in the AFC. And here's a look at how they were assembled. I came here, people ask, well, how long is it going to take to win? And I don't know if I ever answered that question, because I'm not good at that. I'm not sure how long it takes, uh, because I didn't know the team well enough. Well, we found out that they had a pretty good nucleus here of, of football players, but um, they just hadn't won. I think the big thing that happened, though, is, is just getting the right type of guys in here, guys with a little more character, and they really wanted to make that commitment to winning. And when you get that, they get along together. They're here for the same purpose. One of those who didn't fit into Bethard's mold, two-time pro bowler Lee Williams. Another was running back Gary Anderson, voted the team's MVP two years before Bethard's arrival. Both were traded. Lee Williams was a guy that was never happy. He had been a problem because he wanted to do everything at his pace. And I think that this program right now would have been way too demanding for Lee Williams. He doesn't want to make that commitment. And that's one of the things we felt if a player doesn't want to do that, then we don't want him around. Gary Anderson wasn't a bad apple, and Gary was, I think that was a problem with um, the people that represented Gary. We felt Gary was a good football player. It was just that uh, there had been some damage done in that relationship that we couldn't put back together. Bethard's first draft pick in San Diego was Pro Bowl linebacker Junior Seau. He acquired running back Ronnie Harmon through Plan B free agency, and Harmon led AFC running backs with 79 receptions this season. But some questioned his decision on draft day 1991 when he gave up the Chargers' number one pick in 92 to Washington, and it turned out to be the sixth overall selection. He got the Skins' number five and number two picks in 91 in return and used that number two to take guard Eric Moten. Well, we uh, got to the point in the second round where, we, where Eric Moten was there, and uh, we were a team that needed more offensive linemen. He's been a starter ever since, and he's uh, still not there yet. In August of 92, Bether dealt with his old team again, this time in desperation. As a result of a season-ending injury to starting quarterback John Fries, the Chargers had to make a move. They traded a conditional draft pick, which turned out to be a third rounder, for Stan Humphreys. Bether attempted to acquire Humphreys four months earlier on draft day, but Washington wanted a sixth round pick, and so at that point, the deal was off. Now Bethard was forced to part with a third round choice. Last August, it looked to be a high price, considering Humphreys had started only five games in his four years. Now, it's steel. Had Freeze not gotten hurt, um, he would have probably been our quarterback. And I think John would have done an excellent job. He's a good quarterback. But we still would have tried to get Humphreys. We had tried before John got hurt. I think the fortunate thing for us happened is that's the same time it kind of coincided with the, with the Redskins decision that now's the time to trade him. Bethard received harsh criticism for a move he delayed in executing. At the end of last season, San Diego was a team without leadership or direction. The Chargers were 10 and 22 under head coach Dan Henning and called for a change. 11 days after the season ended, Bobby Ross was finally hired as head One of the reasons I came here was because of Bobby Bethard, if not the main reason. I think it is the main reason. I don't think there's any question about that. From the director of player personnel for the Super Bowl champion Dolphins of the early 70s to the GM spot during two Super Bowl seasons in Washington, Bethard has experienced winning and excitement before. I can't put myself back in that time and, and, and experience the same emotion. I know it was thrilling uh, every place that I've worked. It's been some fun and some thrills, but uh, right now, this seems to be the most exciting. Bob, it's plenty good as a football fan, but you also have to be lucky in the situation with Humphreys, where they wouldn't give up a six, wound up giving a three, and look like a six later. That well, let me tell you, you know what he's got? He's got guts. You look at him on draft day, you look at his history, he makes all kinds of moves. Guys in this league are a to make. What do you think about the Chargers? I like them a lot, Bob. I really like I think they're an old-fashioned football team. They, they play like the NFC teams. Uh, they play very sound defense. I think being Arnsbergen are created stability. Uh, they make you and they beat themselves. They're not out of position. Offensively, they'll slug you. They'll take and punch you right in the face with a football. And that's, that's the way the game should be played. You know, the great Charger teams of the past all through the ball and never win a Super Bowl. This team has a legitimate chance to get to the Super Bowl and win because it plays very sound football. You know, hated even San Diego Chargers history. Now you can remember forever. Silver NFL licensed commemorative. See PC environment.
of the official licensed Super Bowl medallions has just released a limited edition of only 5,000 medallions honoring the Chargers Division Championship. Each individual number and contains one tr Pure Silver comes with its own certificate of authenticity and retails $29.95 plus $5 shipping. one 833 20 now to order.